Gas gasoline versus diesel Mercedes, which one is better? I'm sure if you haven't purchased your first Mercedes yet, or you're thinking about purchasing a Mercedes again, you used to have one years ago, you might be wondering, should I get a gas Mercedes or a diesel Mercedes? Now, we're not going to really be talking about the diesel, the later diesel cars like the 2005 and later E320 CDI. Cars like that are so control unit dependent that they don't actually retain any of the virtues of the diesel Mercedes of the past. But what are some of the advantages of the diesel Mercedes of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s versus the gas Mercedes from the same era? Now there are five big advantages to Mercedes diesels. Number one is the fact that once the engine is running, if the entire electrical system goes down, the car will continue to function. It doesn't need any electricity to run and drive. Number two, uh, you don't have an ignition system to maintain, so no spark plug wires, ignition points, uh, ignition control unit, crankshaft position sensor, ECU, none of that stuff. Totally unnecessary. Number three, the fuel economy is pretty good. I really like being able to push my 83-300D hard and still get 22 to 24 miles per gallon around town, mixed cycle, and like 25, 26 on the highway, if I don't drive too hard. That's one of the things I really love about the car. Meanwhile, with some of the bigger gas Mercedes, you're lucky if you break the 18 mile per gallon mark on premium and leaded. But you ask yourself, why would anybody still want a, a gas Mercedes? And um, that brings us to the number, number five, uh, uh, I think the number five, trait that diesels share and a lot of gasoline Mercedes also share they're just they just run for a long time you know they don't have an expiration date they last infinitely if you maintain them however I'd say that the diesels are better in this category because they don't do things like lose valve guides or blow head gaskets uh, unless you have like a 603 or 602 turbo diesel uh, you know they're pretty um they're pretty robust when it comes to staying together for a long period of time, even when they're not treated the best. So what advantages then do gas Mercedes have? Well, it boils down to power and smoothness. Uh, reliability is in there too. I mean, for gas cars, they're fantastic. They do a great job running on, you know, even when you have a KE control unit that goes down or intermittently functioning electronic parts, things still work pretty well. Uh, and I, I, have to, I have to admit that one of the things that endeared me to gasoline Mercedes was the fact that while you have most cars running off of some goofy Bosch LJetronic or Motronic system, which are not very good injection systems because they're so control unit dependent, Mercedes did everything they could up to like 1991, 92 when they started switching over to LH. They did everything they could to make the gasoline engines non-control unit dependent. The only exceptions are the DJtronic cars, which have a pretty damn robust giant control unit. It looks like something you'd see in the, you know, in the ENIAC or, or something like that at, at, um, at Harvard in the 1940s. It was just un unkillable. So um, I, I say if you're looking for a Mercedes as a daily driver, you might want to consider a diesel. Just because they're efficient, they're easy to maintain, sorting costs are generally lower, like a water pump for a 300D from Mercedes is $39.50, whereas if you need a water pump from, I don't know, if you need a water pump for a, a, a 450SL, it's about $250 or so. So, the, you know, you've got some differences there, but... Um, the, the idea with diesels is that if you set everything up right, the car will run. Whereas with gasoline Mercedes, sometimes you set everything up right and they still don't run right. So, ugh. Um, 
the other thing about gas Mercedes, other than the power and the smoothness, is that there was a lot more model diversity among gas Mercedes. With diesel Mercedes, the only exception they ever made to the four doors utilitarian platform was the 300 CD. And that was it. Period. Unless you wanted a truck. Uh, but with the gas models, you get so much diversity. Coupes, convertibles, cabriolets, uh, two plus twos, more convertibles, big engine sedans, little engine sedans. I mean, there's just so much model diversity that you can sort of find something that you really like. That's why I tell people when you're looking at a classic Mercedes, Mercedes major, major car that you wanted, you just don't know it. <laughs> and that's probably the other thing. You know, sometimes to get some of the honey, you have to get stung by the bees. Uh, I look at some of the difficulties of dealing with Mercedes, uh, you know, which are overall excellent cars, especially gas Mercedes uh, as as a test sometimes because you have to go through some very unpleasant circumstances to get the wonderful satisfaction of driving a fully sorted 300 SEL 6.3 or 560 SL or 190 SL or 300 CE 24 valve. You know, a lot of these cars take a lot of pain and suffering to make work right, but the end product is just so great. Whereas with the diesels, I'm not saying you get instant gratification, but, 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 it's much easier to get from having a car that's been sitting in a garage for 30 years to a running driving car than with a gas Mercedes. And the sortability of a diesel is really a nice thing. So I say if you're like new to Mercedes and you want a reliable older Mercedes Benz, get a diesel, get a 123, get a 115, 116, 126, any of those cars, preferably pre-85. And if you are into the visual aspect and you want a car that goes fast and, and hauls, you know, you should probably look at a, at a gas Mercedes just because they, they seem to deliver a punch very well. And the gasoline engines are extremely well made, even if they need valve jobs every 150,000 miles. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. This channel is brought to you by a handful of Patreon members. How many Patreon members do we have now, Thomas? 97. We have 97 Patreon members who are working to bring you unbiased, uninfluenced real Mercedes content from my garage where we see lots of ridiculous things in classic Mercedes. So we appreciate all 97 of you and anybody else who's thinking about joining us on Patreon. Remember our advice is always free. You just have to ask. Uh, we're trying to keep it real. So in the meantime, enjoy uh, driving your Mercedes Benz, whether it's gas or diesel. And there are a lot of great Mercedes out there that need new homes. So whatever you're thinking of doing, you know, buy a classic Mercedes. It doesn't matter if it's gas or diesel or not, just stick with it and don't give up.